Where do you start with a vehicle like this, the new McLaren Artura? Well, how about with the price of £189,200? Or the fact that the Artura is McLaren's first full production hybrid and will form the basis of most of its new models for the next decade. In other words, it matters, does the Artura, a lot. Beneath its new carbon composite rear bodywork sits a twin-turbo V6 hybrid engine and eight-speed dual-clutch gearbox, plus a brand new carbon fibre chassis that still manages to weigh a fraction less than 1,500 kilograms all up, which is mighty impressive for a hybrid. Despite all its new tech, however, the Artura is still rear-wheel drive and has a new e-diff to keep its energy in check. And in the flesh, Although it looks broadly familiar to what's gone before, it does look thoroughly spectacular. I'm going to spend 48 hours in it basically, finding out whether it's good, because it's bound to be good, really good, or off the dial. I don't know yet. I've driven it a bit. I'm kind of struggling to make my mind up a touch. There are elements of it that I really like, because it is really good but it is quite a complex car to get your head around. So really the only way I can do that is to climb in and drive it some more. This is gonna be fun. It is a deeply impressive car, the new McLaren Artura for all sorts of reasons, not just because of this new hybrid powertrain, not just because of the fact that it is outrageously, savagely fast. I mean, it's proper quick in a straight line, this thing, it really is. But it's just, it's its overall capability that is, as I say, really impressive. But I am beginning to wonder if it might not be a little bit too clinical for its own good. It is savagely quick, but there isn't a kind of crescendo towards the top end of the rev range that I want, even though it revs to eight and a half. This new V6 twin turbo hybrid has masses going for it on paper, and it sounds quite good. It doesn't sound amazing, it sounds quite good. It kind of feels like it's a little bit too sensible for its own good for a nearly 700 horsepower I just wanted to let rip a bit more in terms of personality but the way it goes around corners the way it stops the way it changes gear the ride is all of that is just quite brilliant really really brilliant cutting edge top draw stuff I just want it to be a bit madder, a bit more, you know, a bit more lucid, a bit more crazed. It feels like they've throttled back on it ever so slightly in terms of personality and output and dynamic feel because there is very obviously more to come from this chassis, from that engine, from this package. It feels like in a year or so's time there is going to be a version of this car. Might not even be called an Artura, it might be something else, it might be a 720S hybrid or whatever it might be. That is considerably more nuts and is the moment where you go, ah, now it makes sense. I really like the new interior. They've put all the mode buttons up here, which is great and it works a treat because you you just flick that little button there to go back down into E mode I've just gone, on to, gone into. But you go one up for comfort, another one up for sport, another one up for track. Same with the chassis. You've got comfort, sport and track. And then within that you've got these little buttons here to press the traction control off and the ESC system. And this one here to switch between manual and automatic. So it's all very intuitive. It's more intuitive than it was before. I like that, it's good. What's gone a little bit is the sort of lovely 
grainy interaction between your backside seat and the tyres and the road below. The steering is great, it's really accurate, really precise, nice and light, typical McLaren steering, just kind of laser focused and lovely snap on turning. But some of the feel has definitely gone and that's the offset that you get for the fact that there is less kickback. It's all compromises. All cars like this are always compromises. The technical capabilities of the Artura are very easy to be impressed by, not least the fact that it can do almost 20 miles in E-mode alone and will recharge on the move in only a couple of hundred miles if you drive it right. There's no regen of the batteries via the brakes. Instead, the McLaren has designed a system to regen pretty much whenever you're not on the throttle, basically. The more aggressively you drive it, the faster it regens. Yet, on the move, the system feels extremely natural and unintrusive. Plus, the brakes maintain a lovely amount of feel. I've done quite a few more miles in the Altura now. And I am starting to gel with it. Inevitably, you do. The more time you spend in cars like this, the more you fall for them, the more you understand them. This is quite a complex car to get your head around. The curb weight is still just a nudge under 1,500 kilograms, which is deeply, deeply impressive compared with some rivals, compared with one key rival. And you can feel it, the agility that the Artura has got on roads like this, it's just, it's really good. The gearbox just works so nicely too and it stops brilliantly. None of which would be possible if it didn't have that fundamental lightness at its core. I'm still not absolutely convinced by the steering. It's, it's very good steering, but it's not epic steering. Same with the noise. And I do wish it made a bit more noise, and I do wish it was a bit more just vociferous, generally. I just wish it was a bit larrier. Not complain about the composure though, or the speed, or the agility, or really anything in black and white terms because it just ticks every single box with a really big correct tick. It's just it's just this bit here. It's not fully igniting my emotions. Dynamically, it's kind of a 10, I suppose. So fast, it's deceptively fast on a road like this. <laughs> you kind of need to have a bit of a word with yourself. Actually, the ride is really comfortable, really beautifully damped all the time in any of the modes, to be quite honest. But I still think that to get the very best out of it, I suspect I'm going to have to drive this thing on a track. does feel immediately more exciting to drive on a track. You do need to bring the tyres up to temperature. These courses are quite trick. They're called cyber tyres. And I've got all sorts of info going on here on the dash, telling me when they're up. They're not quite up yet, and I can feel that because the front's just wanting to wash wide a bit. Route, it's quick in a straight line though, this thing. It does the sideways stuff really nicely too. The new e-diff might sound sensible, but it does allow you to do some nice big skids. <laughs> Which of course is essential when driving any car, but especially a mid-engine McLaren with 680 horsepower. Okay, now the front now the front tyres are up to temperature. The front end is terrific. It really is. 
it's very agile. Disguises its weight so well, this car. Oh, I love the steering on it, I really do. Much more so on the track than I did on the road. Just because you've got space to play with, the car just feels more playful, full stop. It's just so slow. Big brakes, big brakes on this car. It's seriously quick, this thing. But it's the agility that I'm liking the most. You can muck about with it on the throttle. Right, let's have a bit of a play with it through here. Beautifully balanced. Front and back. You should really be able to do that sort of thing in a mid-engine car. Crikey. right at the top if you've got too many revs on when you hit the rev limit it just goes ding <laughs> which is quite cool okay i better slow down a bit there are various people waving flags at me asking me to come in so i better just cool the car down cool the hybrid system down because it does get quite toasty back there so the artura is a good in places great new supercar not perhaps as exciting outright as you'd want it to be beside the best competition from Germany and Italy, but still bursting with potential all the same. But look, we did have several reliability issues with our test car on the launch event, and we were not the only ones to do so. Given that McLaren has delayed the introduction of the Artura once already due to technical issues, this remains a concern. Bottom line, McLaren needs to sort this aspect if it wants the Artura to be taken seriously and they need to do so because the car itself deserves to fly. Until then though, we can but wonder. Cheers for watching and see you next time.